Hey guys, this week's discussion is about the modeling industry, and I'm actually going to talk about not just the modeling industry, but any industry in which small body size is made as part of the prerequisite of the industry. Something that made me really upset this week is I was talking to a girl who's 15 years old, and we're almost 15, and is going into high school next year, and she is probably, you know, about 130 pounds, maybe 5'3", five, 5'4", five, definitely not overweight, but she was told by the coaches, um, she made the cheerleading team, but she was told by the coaches that in order to stay on the cheerleading team, team, she would have to lose at least 15 pounds before the season started, which I think is totally ridiculous because that's at the very low end of healthy and, and and according to the BMI chart, and that's an average, and so that's not even healthy for a lot of people. There's some people that could be in that range and be healthy, but a lot of people couldn't be. They would be underweight at that um, BMI. So that really made me upset to hear that there are high school coaches that are basically creating or promoting eating disorders in these young girls. Because even if they don't have eating disorders right now, um, peer pressure is a huge thing. And if their coaches and their other teammates <coughs> are pressuring, <coughs> excuse me, are pressuring them into having to be underweight, basically, then the only way they're going to be able to do that, unless they're naturally thin, is by restricting calories or um, so that some other means. So. Um, I think that high school cheerleading teams sometimes are just a breeding ground for eating disorders, and the same is true for the fashion industry, sometimes dance, dance industry, you know, modeling. So somehow we've got to change this perception that you have to be underweight in order to fit into this industry because it's not healthy and it's not promoting health in our country because we, in turn, the rest of the world gets this view of perfection that's not healthy. So how can we combat this? Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it yet, but I would, I really want to go into this particular high school and maybe do a presentation to the co coaches um, and maybe make this part of something that I could do in other high schools as well to raise awareness. I have a presentation that I've done for high school and college students and other places. And I think it would be a really good thing to educate these coaches. And I don't, I mean, I know they know about eating disorders, so, but it just, um, I, I'm sure that they have to have had something along the way of eating disorders in their education, like in a nutrition class or something. And if they're teaching in high schools, then obviously they have to be aware of it. So, <clears throat> so I don't know, somehow we've got to start fighting back. And let me tell you, if my daughter, she's 11 now, if she decided that she wanted to be on the cheerleading team, which really honestly, I hope she doesn't because I don't want her to be under that pressure, and I think there's a lot of other things that she could do that are healthy without promoting eating disorders, but I also believe that kids should pursue the things that they want to pursue in life, and so <clears throat> if she wanted to do that, um, I would have a serious talk with the coaches, and if I found out that there were policies on weight or things like that or discrimination, I would probably take it to the school board and have it changed. We don't need to have this false image of perfection that doesn't truly doesn't exist. We need to work on this uh, and the only way I think we're going to do it is by fighting back and we're fighting up against a huge force but if enough people start fighting back, then that's how things change. And so we need to start grassroots movements in our communities, 
parent groups, you know, however we can get into these industries and say we are not going to accept this anymore. And the modeling industry is one industry, but, uh, but I think that some of these other groups like cheerleading are an even bigger problem because there are more girls that are in these groups. Um, the modeling industry, it's a problem, but in all reality, there are less girls that are going to make it in modeling or pursue modeling than there are girls that are going to be doing cheerleading or dance and gymnastics and just, you know, amateur type sports. So I'm not, you know, I'm not disqualifying the model industry at all. I think it's a huge problem and it contributes to the problem dramatically because that's the images we're seeing. But, um, <clears throat> but this is just as much of a problem. So I would encourage you to look for ways that you can fight this. And if you see something <clears throat> happen like this, don't just be quiet about it. Um, I talked to the girl a little bit and I don't know, I mean, hopefully some of what I said will affect her positively, but, um, but I fully intend on, um, maybe getting some information out to the, to the coaches and <clears throat> doing what I can do in my part to promote healthier body images. Um, it's kind of scary for me because I have an eating disorder myself and I have a daughter who's 11 and I'm in recovery myself, but <clears throat> I know that she ha is at higher risk for developing an eating disorder than um, somebody that doesn't have a parent with an eating disorder. So I have to be really careful and I have to be proactive myself without, you know, you can't go too far the other way either where um, you are so just out there forward and not diplomatic about it because that is just going to turn people off and make the problem worse. But, you know, keep fighting. My second th thought for today this is totally unrelated, but I wanted to share this because I had this really cool experience today. I went for one of my longer runs today, and the snow has finally melted up in the mountains, at least where I run, which was really exciting. The trails were dry, just a few muddy spots, so I was able to run out there. And as I was running, I had downloaded some inspirational messages on my iPod, and was listening to them as I ran. And the cool thing was, because I was really listening to them, um, I didn't give any thought at all to burning calories, to you know anything really related to my physical body. I just focused on what it was saying. And the two messages that I got out of it today were um, focusing on gratitude and focusing on hope. And I think those two things are so important in recovery. If you can develop a sense of gratitude, and really people overall in life, when they are able to see the successes and see the abundance in their lives, and they choose abundance, and I'm not saying that you have to be wealthy financially, but you know, people, pe there's people out there that go through tremendous hardships yet. They accomplish so many great things because they can see the abundance in their life and they're grateful for what they have. And what they have, you look at it and like that, and you're like, that's really crummy that they have that in life. But then you look at the things that they've been able to accomplish. Uh, I mean, it's amazing what people can accomplish out there. And the second is having hope. If you get into a mode of despair then everything goes downhill from there. And I've experienced this several times, and I'm sure that, you know, I'm not perfect, so I'm sure that I'm not necessarily done experiencing this. But having hope and having gratitude are two the two things that I'm focusing on this week and two really important things to keep in mind with recovery. Because even through the hard times, if you're able to get back and focus on gratitude, you'll make it. And it's, you don't have to be perfect, even in gratitude, but just keep working towards it and you'll get better. So I hope you have a good week.